science fiction horror to blow your mind. Hello, I'm Alan Jones, and welcome to a mind over splatter trip through a trio of telepathic terrors that just might make your head explode. Director David Cronenberg had two underground movies and four features to his credit when Scanners burst on the scene in early 1981. It remains one of his biggest blockbuster hits, alongside The Dead Zone and The Fly remake. But no one knew then what a modern classic it would prove to be and how much it would elevate the Toronto-born Canadian into the well-respected genre niche she has now occupied for decades. True, Shivers, Rabid and The Brood had netted Cronenberg a cult amongst horror fans for his disturbing and visually unafraid flesh creepers. He was always breaking controversial barriers with his startling knack to give bizarrely organic shape to every form of rage. This accent on what he called terrible beauty earned him the title The King of Venereal Horror. It's a small field, but at least I'm king of it, quipped Cronenberg in typically droll fashion when he first heard that description. You're a scanner. And that has been the source of all your agony. But I will show you now that it can be a source of great power. But Scanners, with its large budget for the time of $4 million plus, signalled Cronenberg's mainstream breakthrough, that he achieved it without diminishing his signature concerns, the horrors lurking within the human body, and society's inability to control them, showed how times were changing. Audiences had finally caught up with his confrontational views on corrupted dark futures. I want to show the unshowable, to speak the unspeakable, Cronenberg once told me. All my films have to do with physical existence and what happens when that breaks down in some radical way. <coughs> Scanners came at a time when Cronenberg knew he had to broaden his audience to survive. The Brood had been sold as a trashy B-movie, yet there was clearly a more receptive market out there for his brand of sophisticated shocker. Get your hands up the age of 20 he was extremely self-destructive now at the age of 35 he is simply destructive in many ways Cameron, if he's your enemy so Cronenberg wrote his purest science fiction film to date a conspiracy chiller detailing the struggle of a telepathic minority going underground to control their super capabilities and being torn apart by rival factions exploiting their powers the weapons capability of these uh, um, telepathic uh, Curiosities is obvious. The roots of Scanners can actually be seen in stereo, Cronenberg's debut feature made in 1969 when the biochemistry student was looking to change his career. It dealt with experimental surgery to remove the power of speech and therefore increase latent telepathy. What do you mean by that? Cronenberg said, in stereo, I was trying to show it would not be terrific to have extrasensory perception, especially if you didn't know how to control it. That became the premise of Scanners, which in early drafts sported the title Telepathy 2000, and then The Sensitives. End your scan. End it! The final title was picked because Cronenberg had read Philip K. Dick's novel, A Scanner Darkly. The Blade Runner author doesn't use the term in quite the same way, but that expression for mind reading, Cronenberg thought made for a catchy title. Cronenberg cast newcomer Stephen Lack in the lead role of reluctant telepath Cameron Vale, enlisted by Dr. Paul Ruth to infiltrate a rival scanner group. Lack had made his name in the Canadian underground film The Rubber Gun, and Cronenberg cast him solely because of his translucent, icy blue eyes. You felt as though you were looking right through them directly into his brain, remarked the director. I thought that if a scanner was going to have any physical property at all, that would be one of them. Michael Ironside plays the evil Daryl Revok, leader of the scanner underground, and his charismatic performance, easily one of the best in the entire Cronenberg canon, put the actor on the cold, brutal, tight-lipped villain path he still enjoys to the present day. All right, we're going to do it the scanner way. I'm going to suck your brain dry. Cronenberg has often said Scanners was the most difficult shoot he's ever experienced. The first day's filming on the rush schedule ended with a tragic car crash on a motorway location. Actress Jennifer O'Neill, who agreed to play Kim Obrist based on an unfinished screenplay, got really upset when she realised how violent the movie was going to be too. I want to see someone else. 
And Patrick McGowan, the prisoner himself, playing Dr. Ruth... This isn't the same thing, you understand? Not the same thing at all. ...was continually angry and disruptive over last-minute script changes. His and Cronenberg's mutual animosity lasted throughout the entire production. The fact McGowan gives one of his finest performances can only be attributed to Cronenberg handling his self-destructive stage fright with calm discretion. Fortunate for some. Unfortunate for others. Famous for being the first major head explosion movie, this landmark effect was created by Chris Wallace, who would go on to provide Cronenberg with Oscar-winning makeup for The Fly. It was accomplished by filling a plaster wax head with dog food, corn syrup, rabbit livers and rubber brains, and then shooting it from behind with a 12-gauge shotgun. <laughs> the scanning duel that ends Cronenberg's dazzling vision resulted in the most intense use of makeup effects since The Exorcist. And like that groundbreaker, they were presided over by genius artist Dick Smith. In common with much of Cronenberg's work, scanners proved eerily prophetic. Shivers foretold the AIDS onslaught and video drove the rise of satellite television aesthetics. Here, Cronenberg's finger on the future pulse has the hero scan his way into a computer system via telephone lines to obtain information. No fireworks. A scene created well before the conception of the World Wide Web and the term hacker. My art keeps me sane. Incidentally, take special note of the scene showcasing the art of scanner sculptor Pierce, played by Ron Silverman. Created by Montreal artist Tom Coulter, Cronenberg says the bizarre forms are the physical equivalent of his movies, profound statements on progressive humanity and the moral decay of an ever-changing society. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.